Hey Nikki. I hear you're coming back to work. Glad to hear it. Oh, <laughs> glad to hear it. Thanks for all the prayers you guys sent out. It worked. Or it's working. Keep it up. Okay, here we got the big, the disc bobbled brain strain and ordeal. But we're going to struggle through it. Had one, one fertilizer hose that popped off, made a mess, got to clean that up. It's still cold out, so there's no need of getting too excited about not being out in the field. Now well, let's see. Step up carefully. It's pretty nice up here. A lot higher, can see around. Or look around. Yeah, I can look around up here. Nikki, you can edit that out, right? Of course you can. Okay, I gotta focus, so we'll talk later. I gotta get... You drive the planter to work today? We should be How am I supposed it. to get the pickup out? There's no fires yet, so we don't need the pickups. So Randy's out digging again. He says it's pretty cold. Some frost chunks were coming up. Only along the cattails. I called Precision, our dealer, and he said we're the only guys that uh, put corn in the ground. That well, he knows of. I wouldn't even call what we did putting corn in the ground. We just went out there and made one round and... We did. We only did like five acres to test fire everything and yeah, he's I've... working up ground because he can't sit in the office anymore and they're picking rock they got to okay. work the hilltops and stuff so don't got don't get concerned that we've lost our minds <laughs> yet till this oh, afternoon you need to put this back together actually i would like you to open that up show me one more time because it's so cold i'm afraid that the plastic will break <laughs> just pull up on this no well yes pull here pull here but you gotta push down on the clip there so we had a malfunction here with a fertilizer tube come unhooked filled everything full of fertilizer so yeah we're we're cleaning now you figuring it out there douglas push no. down there i and pull where's I'll my hold this where's my third arm there you go yeah look at that sticky fertilizer down in there that's probably less than ideal so we're rewiring our evx valve we've had it wired incorrectly actually it's a very long story that I won't go down that road with you but we got this EVX valve from Bandro through farm chem and it's a three-way valve so this is what's controlling where our fertilizer pump sucks from so it either is sucking from the tractor saddle tanks or the planter tank and we are going to be able to control this from the cab fortunately now we have just found and discovered that this wire here is what used to drive our old hydraulic drive disconnect, correct? Left so we've right. got a keyed yep. power, we got a ground, and then when you flip your switch on the planter box to shut off the right half of the planter, which is no longer on the planter because we're all precision V-drive and speed tube. So the wire is just there doing nothing. That's what we're gonna wire it into and we'll actually be able to use our uh, disconnect box to control this valve from the cab as his tanks go empty, we're either going to be going from the planter or the saddle tanks. All on the fly at 10 miles an hour, right? That's the plan? So you want this That's the plan? One? That's the plan, right? You right. This white one for this, the only one that wasn't being used. Yeah. We had a plan yesterday, too. Yeah, and it didn't, didn't no, quite the, work the out. The plan got derailed. Yep. Eric, you also want to tell them about this hand washing station, how I was a part of getting farm chem to get this product on their website. I didn't know you were actually. I was. I was. I wanted a hand washing jug that can be screwed or bolted on to any piece of equipment of fairly easily. And look at what we got now. We can now wash our hands off after we unhook our fertilizer. And I have ordered another one through the link in the description, farmchem.com. You can get your own. Pretty excited. Can save by five percent too on this thing. Could we uh in the part number in the part number alone it says CL in it? That's for Chet Larson. Well I think Chet Larson should design it with warm water. Can you heat this up somehow? <laughs> oh that'd be an upcharge. I think guys. It almost that'd be an upcharge. You got that wire loom or are we not putting that on? What? 
What? Wire yeah, loom. I, I just took better. that in the shop there. Hey! Is now the time to talk about Coca-Cola and I might have to stop drinking Mellow Yellow? Why? Well, they're being naughty. Why would you drink Coca-Cola? Mellow Yellow is Coke. Well, yeah. Why does that change anything? I don't know if it made a cut last night. Made the cut when he hit a tree, but... Remember when you hit that tree last night? Here's your part, here's your trophies. That was just a twig. Just a twig, just a four inch round twig. <laughs> <laughs> Eric seems really focused and stressed. So the nice thing about the EVX valve is there should be lights on it that indicate if you have power, if you have low voltage, if it's overheating, there it goes, it's running. It's running, it's in flow mode. Woo! I see the It's working! I see the blue light. Oh yeah, perfect. So that makes me very happy. So I believe that's saddle tanks. Yeah, it is, that's how that works. That should be saddle tanks. That is saddle tanks, wherever you got your switch is saddle tanks right there. Okay, R is tractor. R is tractor. What if it was planter? Oh boy, we got a problem. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> write it on the window. Oh, you write it right in the site? Yeah. Okay, so what do you got here? Right here are the clutches. Yeah. That's what used to run back when it was used to run hydraulic the, drive. Used to run the, yeah. What are they called? Hydraulic drives. Didn't you just say that? That's what I just said. I don't know why used you're to run, Are you talking more? It used to run the hydraulic drives. <laughs> so when he clutches it, which would send power out there, it switches then to what? What did you just write down? I think Eric just got in the valve. Right, his tractor. Tractor. But then Eric said, what if it's planter? <laughs> this, I don't, maybe you need a red tractor and then it would match red. Really in deep thought. Oh, I see your phone mount made it to the tractor. You gotta have that so everybody gets dizzy. Oh. Actually, it's more for me than for others. He puts his uh, Bluetooth in. He sets it there and pushes the Instagram stories and then just listens to everybody's story of the, all of the people that you follow. Isn't that right? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> there's nothing good on the radio, just like there's nothing good on television no more, so. Yeah, and then uh, thought just disappeared. Oh yeah, then you rip a planter marker off. No, no, that would happen if you were holding your phone. No, it just hangs there with blue. Okay, I got to focus here now. He uh, says that a lot. You gonna have your backrest up in the air like a king's seat here? Just leave it alone, it's Look just fine. Look at the dirt all over in here. It's like we were out in the field. You got this stack with mellows yet? Got your Dr. Pepper in there. Farmer Dan's been here. Eric! Texted Randy, he's got a load of 28% ordered. Yeah. Go after... So we think we're gonna here? go. We're gonna go on. Huh? I'm gonna have to be ready. Prepare yeah. is good. So you're gonna go get some? At some point today, what's the plan here? Well, I think we're prepared. Now it's just to wait for the frost to come out again. <laughs> yeah. And then I suppose we could plant more, but I don't know. How about that? Uh, well, I don't wanna go now, cause it'll interrupt dinner. My hour break. <laughs> <laughs> so. You always walk around like that? Well, I had a spare in case I needed it. There's hair on that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Our fertilizer hose being off was a very bad thing, huh? Be a farmer, they said. The fertilizer got inside everything and is causing trouble. Is that what I would assume is going on? Wait till you see it. Oh, I see it right now. That's all sticky fertilizer. Yep, and the motor can't even turn that thing. So we get to go home, take that whole thing apart. And wash it, wash it up. Don't go nowhere when how about, I leave. How about our hand wash station? Would that be enough water? We got four gallons. Because it ain't more water. <laughs> I want to go home. Bristles are all... We're going to have to go home and get the air compressor and dry this up after we wash it. Oh. Going home. Going home. It's way down inside there. You're not. Just clean it up. Oh my God. We sucked it up into the damn... Yeah, it... We sucked it up into the sucker hole. We gotta go home. Come along, let's go.
You know, I maybe should have thought about that when I found the hose literally sitting on the seed disc area. And I imagine at 10 miles an hour, the fertilizer has a lot of pressure. That's unfortunate. Are we having fun? Oh God. It's a good thing it's early and we shouldn't be planting because we ain't getting jack wonky donk done. <laughs> oh, sorry for spitting all over. <laughs> There's maybe a reason the Lord is just saying, let's just not. Are we clear? Any traffic coming from the north? I'm gonna have a nap. Clear! Don't tip us over now. What do you think the problem is down here? Drainage issues. Tile's broke. Sticky. Yucky. Yuck. Yuck. The nice thing about this V drive is now that row 24 has not planted this, I don't know, I suppose 150, 200 feet. So we're gonna back back up and the planter knows that the other 23 rows have planted already. So we redrive that same path and it will plant only row 24. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Makes it, uh, oh, you don't have to double plant or anything. The, the planter will not double plant as long as you got your offsets set correctly. Well, while Doug and Chet are out spilling fertilizer all over the corn planter, I'm sure, I'm gonna test fire this sprayer out in the field. So I got the offsets put into the 2630 and we're gonna go out and spray a mock headland and then test my shut off and turn on times so that I'm getting good coverage and not having any skips later on in the season. So I just got water in the sprayer, gonna go outside and do that. We'll flag where my headland is, and you guys are gonna help me see if we're getting good coverage. Also, gonna have to get the steerable hitch set up, which is pretty simple, but I gotta get out and unfold and drive and make sure that the sp uh, sprayer tracks are following my tractor tracks. So, should be simple if everything works. Let's go give it a shot. This morning, Chet and I put all the nozzles on this new sprayer, took them off our other one. Uh, for pre-emerge, we're gonna be running flood nozzles, and we skip two nozzles and put a flood nozzle every third, just due to how wide they are. Um, so I'm gonna have to set up my boom height out there too to make sure that each nozzle is spraying to the center of the next nozzle. And then we'll have that height set so that when I'm out spraying pre-emerge on corn, we'll be good to go and covering what we want. setting process continues. So we put this kit on here last year from uh, LDM Egg for the weight distribution kit. So it puts more weight on the wings than on the center. And you can adjust the pressure right here. We got it at a thousand, that's the max pressure. I think we're gonna lower it down because I think there's too much weight being put on the edges because the road cleaners are turning on the outside but not on the inside of the planter. So I think we got a little too much pressure going on. So basically, you just loosen that nut up and whoop, pick where you want the pressure at. We're gonna go to 900, see how that looks. How could you ever farm without a plier? Boom, that's done. Look at our row cleaners. Make sure we don't have any leaks. How's our turn off doing? Because of furrow force, I can't find my furrow. Yeah, I know. It does a good job, doesn't it? Uh, I would say your first kernel will be about there from what we've seen last night. Oh, is that right? Should be about a foot back. There it is. Woo! So that's what, 16 inches? It's perfect for the picker snoot to come along without hitting the other ones. I want it to stop about 15 inches, a foot, 15 inches. We should maybe test it going the other way into the field to make sure that's dropping right too. 
We could do that over there. Yeah, okay. let's uh, do that. Got your little poker. The bottom of it or what? Where would you call ground level? It's so difficult. I didn't do it right. It's now. so easy sitting in the shop thinking. Well, we just planned. I did. I think we're two, two and a quarter. I want to show you guys this really quick here. This is the center of the planter where half of the planter is furrow forced to my left and to my right is just the normal deer closing wheel. With my fancy tool I dug down in the row with the deer closing system and you can see the V still. See how evident that is? It is literally hard on each side of the wall. You can see how firm that is. That's what they call sidewall compaction. It's really hard, really, really, really hard. You can see the spacing is beautiful though. And over here is the uh, furrow force row where you can see I used my hand to dig. This is how nice and fluffy it is. I mean, you dig down, there is no V here, nothing. There is nothing there. So here is where I dug down spacing once again, perfect. That should never change no matter what your closing system is. But there is no sidewall compaction. I mean, look at that. It is nice and soft, very mellow. So, we're seeing what we seen last year when we ran four rows with it. And I am really excited to have a side-by-side -side because I want this, I want this to work for yield. That's why we're uh, doing half the planter so that we get a 12 row comparison with our corn combines. So now with furrow force, how it works is it actually just crushes the sidewall and just rips it back up, almost like the digger was there. Packer wheel part of it packs it back down and actually squishes the air back out of the dirt. Now, in wet conditions, you want to air on the light side. We learned that last year. Our precision dealer learned that last year. Air on the light side because you can put a ton a ton of pressure on there but you can also make it a highway i'm excited to see i am so excited to see this i'm gonna do some flag tests this uh spring when it starts coming out of the ground you might do that on some of the later planted stuff because who knows if the temperatures might play a role in the emergence it is beautiful working good maybe we should plant this deep as we can get it. It might be warmer down there than it is up <laughs> My here. My nose is running so bad. Look at that rock got pushed out of the way from our row cleaner. Where's the rock picker guy? Okay, we got to double check the burrow bars, coulters, or whatever you call them. Uh, these! Yeah, so what do you got? You definitely do not want these running deeper than your seat because they are lifting and closing the soil together. So we gotta ensure, we've been messing with the depth of the planter, so we gotta ensure that the furrow force is not now deeper than the seed, or you'll have a big big problem, because you'll actually move the seed around. Did you show them them lines? Yeah, in the last video I showed the lines, that's inch and a half, that's two inches deep, dirt level. It's just a guide to start with. Oh my God, <clears throat> if the camera knew how exhausting that was. Okay. Got everything dialed in, steerable hitch, had to play around with the numbers on that, sensitivity and correction rate or whatever it is called. Got that, so it'll follow me through my turns on the headlands. I'll leave the steerable hitch turned off when we do pre-emerge. Uh, that way we're not running over the ground twice. Let the uh, sprayer go to the side when I turn. Um, it seems to work better for the corn to grow up through it. Got my auto boom set. We're gonna go at 40 inches off the ground. That's uh, gonna work good for the flood nozzles. I want each flood nozzle to spray to the center of the spray pattern of the nozzle next to it, if that makes sense. Also, not sure if you guys can see, but with the flag set out, my turn on and turn off times when I'm coming into coverage or coming into acres I've already sprayed, seems to work good. I think that's gonna work fine. Dialed in. Really needed a second set of eyes. This camera does not work for that, but we tried. Got tracks all over the field here. Sorry, Randy. Might have to double pass. The compaction's gonna be everywhere. Might as well just call this six acres a wash. Oh, otherwise, I am hungry. Not really, but don't we eat when we're bored? I eat when I'm unhappy, and I'm unhappy because I eat. Austin Powers? All right. 
Signing off. Gonna go see what Doug's doing. He's out planting. I'm sure that, ooh, maybe I'll just go spray. Load up, follow him over there, get right up behind him. That's what they like, pressure him. I'm sure he's doing good. Another field done, pulling out. It's a really tight, tight squeeze. Articulated tractor makes it very difficult to get in and out of approaches. That is very noticeable on the first couple of approaches we've taken. I made it out a lot better than making it in. We'll see if he shuts her down for the night or if he's gonna go to another 30 acre field. So it was another day, pretty much total day of setting up stuff and just being with dad, making sure he understands uh, the GPS and all that new tractor. The monitor is the same as last year, but it's just a refresher course, you know? Not that I know much about it because I've never planted corn, but uh, it's good to have two eyes looking. Where'd you come from? Where's he off to? I don't know if he's gonna go home or what. You're gonna do it, huh? Randy said that the East Headlands on humans need morning a little bit to dry, and Jan's Headlands as well, because he worked them all at the end. He said he had to break up his frozen chunks. Oh my. So he said, well, maybe you just do decks in the morning while the other stuff dries. And then he was talking about getting two diggers going on Tufty Pulses. Two diggers tomorrow, huh? It's gonna rain Friday. <laughs> he got the jump, what can I say? Looks like dad says that's it. He's shutting her down for the day. Can't even get around the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think my gas tank tipped over in the back. That's gotta be spilling everywhere. Did you get me? Or you got me on the jump? It's pretty even, but I definitely beat you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Of course, he's got the speakers bumping. Oh my. Looks like the rock picker crew is back. Getting some fuel. Of course, it's a busy, busy place. Merlin's right in the way of everything. <laughs> well, guys, I think we're gonna call it a night tonight. Thanks for watching today. Hopefully we get cranked up here and get some more action shots. Today was just another getting the kinks worked out everything. Anyone that's a farmer knows how the first few days go, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, normally not the funnest days on the farm. It's pretty stressful and normally tempers might be a little bit unsteady. I stayed pretty calm. You're always calm. I know. I, I value that <laughs> as, an in, as an employer. It's easier after all the abuse in my childhood. Yeah. Oh, come on. Three inches short. See you guys next time. <laughs>